Good evening and welcome to St. Stephen's Episcopal Church on this Tuesday, August 18th, the day when the church remembers William Portia DeBose. So glad you could join me for evening prayer tonight. I invite you to follow along uh, in your Book of Common Prayer. Our service begins on page 115. Or you can click on the link in the description, bcponline.org. You can follow along there. Or you can sit back and allow the prayers to speak to you wherever you may be this evening. And now, as we begin our time in worship, let us pause, take a few deep breaths, and recall the presence of Christ in our midst. Seek him who made the Pleiades and Orion, and turns deep darkness into the morning, and darkens the day into night, who calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out upon the surface of the earth. The Lord is his name. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. O gracious light. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven. O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed. Now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices. O Son of God, O giver of life and to be glorified through all the worlds. The Psalms appointed for this evening are Psalms 128, 129, and 130, found beginning on page 783 in the Book of Common Prayer. Psalms 128, 129, and 130. Happy they are who fear the Lord and who follow in his ways. You shall eat the fruit of your labor. Happiness and prosperity shall be yours. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children like olive shoots round about your table. The man who fears the Lord shall thus indeed be blessed. The Lord bless you from Zion. And may you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you live to see your children's children. May peace be upon Israel. Greatly have they oppressed me since my youth, let Israel now say. Greatly have they oppressed me since my youth, but they have not prevailed against me. The plowmen plowed upon my back and made their furrows long. The Lord, the righteous one, has cut the cords of the wicked. Let them be put to shame and thrown back, all those who are enemies of Zion. Let them be like grass upon the housetops which withers before it can be plucked, which does not fill the hand of the reaper nor the bosom of him who binds the sheaves, so that those who go by say not so much as, the Lord prosper you. We wish you well in the name of the Lord. Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to note what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you, therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him, and his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Judges. The 600 men of the Danites, armed with their weapons of war, stood at the entrance of the gate. And the five men who had gone out to spy on the land went up and entered 
and took the graven image, the ephod, and the tephim, and the molten image, while the priest stood by the entrance of the gate with the 600 men armed with weapons of war. And when these went into Micah's house and took the graven image, the ephod, the teraphim, and the molten image, the priest said to them, what are you doing? And they said to him, keep quiet, put your hand upon your mouth and come with us and be to us a father and a priest. Is it better for you to be a priest to the house of one man or to be priest to a tribe and family in Israel? And the priest's heart was glad. He took the ephod and the teraphim and the graven image and went in the midst of the people. So they turned and departed, putting the little ones and the cattle and the goods in front of them. When they are a good way from the home of Micah, the men who were in the houses near Micah's house were called out and they overtook the Denites. And they shouted to the Denites, who turned round and said to Micah, What ails you that you come with such a company? And he said, You take my gods which I made and the priest and go away, and what have I left? How then do you ask me what ails you? And the Denites said to him, do not let your voice be heard among us, lest angry fellows fall upon you, and you lose your life with the lives of your household. Then the Danites went their way. And when Micah saw that they were too strong for him, he turned and went back to his home. And taking what Micah had made, and the priest who belonged to him, the Danites came to Liasha, and to a people quiet and unsuspecting, and smote them with the edge of the sword, and burned the city with fire. And there was no deliverer, because it was far from Sidon, and they had no dealings with anyone. It was in the valley which belongs to Beth Rehob, and they rebuilt the city and dwelt in it. And they named the city Dan, after the name of Dan, their ancestor, who was born to Israel. But the name of the city Laish at first, but the name of the city was Laish at, at the first. And the Danites set up the graven image for themselves. And Jonathan, the son of Gershorm, son of Moses, and his sons were priests to the tribe of the Danites until the day of the captivity of the land. So they set up Micah's graven image, which he made, as long as the house of God was at Shiloh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Song of Mary. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servants. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm, he has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to John. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, and a multitude followed him, because they saw the signs which he did on those who were diseased. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Lifting up his eyes, then, and seeing that a multitude was coming to him, Jesus said to Philip, How are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? This, he said, to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many? Jesus said, make the people sit down. 
Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down, in number about 5,000. Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. When the people saw the sign which he had done, they said, This indeed, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. Perceiving then that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, Jesus withdrew again to the mountain by himself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is the day the church remembers and honors William Portia de Bose, and he was probably the most original and creative thinker in the American Episcopal Church has ever produced. He spent most of his life as a professor at the University of the South in Suwannee, Tennessee, where yours truly went to seminary. He was not widely traveled and not widely known until at the age of 56, he published the first of several books on theology that made him respected, not only in his own country, but also in England and France, books that I have in my office. DuBose was born in 1836 in South Carolina into a wealthy and cultured Huguenot family. At the University of Virginia, he acquired a fluent knowledge of Greek and other languages, which helped him lay the foundation for a profound understanding of the New Testament. His theological studies were begun at the Episcopal Seminary in Camden, South Carolina. He was ordained in 1861 and became an officer and chaplain in the Confederate Army. Doctrine and life were always in close relationship for DuBose. In a series of books, he probed the inner meaning of the Gospels, the Epistles of Paul, and the Epistle to the Hebrews. He treated life and doctrine as a dramatic dialogue, fusing the best of contemporary thought and criticism with his own strong inner faith. The result was, a, was both a personal and scriptural Catholic theology. He reflected, as he acknowledged, the great religious movements of the 19th century, the Tractarianism at Oxford, the liber liberalism of F.D. Maurice, the scholarship of the Germans, and the evangelical spirit that was so pervasive at the time. The richness and complexity of De Bose's thought were not easily captured in a few words, but the following passage written shortly before his death in 1918 was a characteristic sample of his theology. And it reads, God has placed forever before our eyes, not the image, but the very person of the spiritual man. We have not to ascend into heaven to bring him down, nor descend into the abyss to bring him up, for he is with us and near us and in us. We have only to confess with our mouths that he is Lord and believe in our hearts that God has raised him from the dead and raised us in him, and we shall live. And so today, the church remembers and honors William Portia DuBose. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, found on page 120. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages be <clears throat> that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. We entreat you, O Lord, that your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses. We entreat you, O Lord, that there may be peace to your church and to the whole world. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Stephen, blessed William, and all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. We entreat you, O Lord. I collect for the feast of William Portia de Bowes. Almighty God, you gave to your servant William Portia de Bowes special gifts of grace to understand the scriptures and to teach the truth as it is in Christ Jesus. Grant that by this teaching we may know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A Collect for Aid Against Perils Be our light in the darkness, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A prayer for mission. O God, you manifest in your servants the signs of your presence. Send forth upon us the spirit of love, that in companionship with one another, your abounding grace may increase among us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite your own prayers of intercession or thanksgiving. And please feel free to leave those prayer requests in the comment section below. For parish members and friends who are ill, infirm, or in need, including David, Jeannie, Evelyn, Leo, Rob, Ben, Eleanor, Samuel, Matthew, Phil, Joan, Eloise, Pete, Mary and Scott, Loretta, Leonard, May, Bill, Carolyn, Bridget, Katie and Doug and their three children, Bryce, Meredith and her family, Bill, Brooke, George, Nicholas, Jordan, Gladys, Nancy, and Jean. For those we name with our lips or in our hearts. For those we may name in the comment section. And for those who have asked our prayers but we cannot recall at this time. O oh God of compassion, giver of life and health. We pray your healing mercies upon all who are in any way affected by the outbreak of the COVID-19 coronavirus. Comfort and sustain those who have been stricken, relieve their pain, and restore to them your gifts of gladness and strength. Grant you all in authority the courage to make wise decisions that are essential for the common good, and strengthen them to lead institutions that care for those whom they serve. Protect those who are compelled to work farms and fields, city streets and factories that put them in danger with little pay. Watch over all first responders and those in the medical professions whose duty it is to care for the sick. Guard them all, Lord Christ, from all danger and keep them safe in the knowledge that it is through their sacrifice and service that the health of the whole community is promoted. Mercifully accept these our prayers, O God of all comfort, 
and our only help in time of need. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our worship concludes this evening with the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. I invite you all to join me tomorrow morning at 8.30 for our Wednesday morning Holy Eucharist. There are still spots available if you'd like to join us for in-person worship, the link for which may be found on our Facebook page or in the email blast that was sent out this week or on our uh, website, ststevensmd.org. Um, so you can join us tomorrow morning at 8.30 for that, either in person or live stream on our Facebook page. And you can join me again tomorrow evening from evening prayer right here from St. Stephen's. God's peace be with you. I hope you all are doing well. Uh, I look forward to seeing you again real soon if I haven't seen you already. Please know that we do have two services on Sunday for which you can join us. You can join us uh, Sunday morning at 8.30 on our live stream. Or again, you can join us in person. Or you can join us for our second outdoor service. The first service was great. And I really look forward to the second service this Sunday at 6.30 p.m. out at our outdoor altar. God willing, the weather will hold. It won't be too hot. Um, but come as you are. Bring your, your mask and your lawn chair. And join us for a, a come as you are, more laid back service. Um, we'd love to see you there. God's peace be with you all. Stay safe and stay healthy. Amen. <laughs>